Hi, I'm Cody Alexander. Uh, I'm the cornerbacks coach at Lovejoy High School. I'm also the author of a defensive blog, matchquarters.com. You can also find me on Twitter at the underscore coach underscore A. Today we're going to be discussing defending RPOs. Now, the five principles for defending RPOs. One, you got to eliminate as many RPOs by alignment. Now, you can eliminate the passing RPOs off of alignment with cover downs. Uh, you can press the corners. You can do certain things in certain formations to eliminate the, the screen reads for the offense. Now, most high school offenses aren't running third level RPOs, which is reading the, the spinning of the safeties, but in terms of eliminating as many RPOs as you want as, as possible off of alignment. Number two is to force the weakest runner to carry the ball. Most RPOs are off of a read scheme. They're going to read some, either a second level defender, which would be your linebackers, or a first level defender, which is a defensive end or a defensive tackle. One of the RPO 101 uh, offensive plays that's put in is just a read zone bubble, which we'll discuss later. Uh, and you want to pick who you want to carry the ball. Most offenses now with the spread are putting their quarterback uh, the best athlete at quarterback and the uh, running back now has become more of a secondary ball carrier. What you can do by alignment and which we'll go through during this clinic is how to set up your defense in order to counteract uh, the quarterback running the ball or the, or the running back running the ball. Number three, use option principles. Everything now is basically triple option. That's essentially what they're using. If you look at a zone read bubble scheme, it is a dive by the running back. The quarterback can pull it, and the pitch now is the bubble. Some offenses are now even taking it to where the quarterback pulls it, runs towards the line of scrimmage, and then flips it out to the receiver at the very last second. Number four, stay even. Keep your alignment as simple as possible pre-snap. You want to look like you're going to be static. Now, a lot of a lot of people want to show their spin early, show a blitz early, and those are fine. Uh, but just understand the offense is going to take advantage of that. Five, don't be overly aggressive. When you blitz, you are giving your, the offense and uh, in, in showing the offense what you're going to do. When you blitz, you're giving them quick throws, and you're also going to, going to give them quick reads in the run game. Uh, if you edge blitz and your edge blitzer comes uh, for the dive and there's nobody to take the quarterback because you've also blitzed inside the, ga inside the box as well, you've now given yourself up uh, because – your secondary is now in man coverage and your quarterback, the quarterback's now just going to pull the ball and run. So you don't want to be overly aggressive. You want to use simple line movements. You want to use simple uh, five-man, maybe even six-man pressures, depending on what you're going to send uh, to kind of get the read that you want. The key with anything in all these principles is always going to allude back to you want to force the read. You want to create the read that you want to get. So you've set up the set up the defense to react in a certain way so that way it sees that. Now, let's talk about pre-snap alignments, which is number one. Here is a simple uh, gun near double twin. You have an over front. Now, the I like to set my three technique to the field, and I like to do that because I like to do, to get the cover down man, which is your Sam linebacker, in space. This is the field side, so your, your Sam linebacker is set to the field. Cover down just means he is going to align close to the slot receiver, and in this case, he's going to be on the inside eye. His job in sky coverage, which is just quarters, which is just basically four read, is to match number two. Your defensive end and your three technique are natural wall builders to the field and allow the Sam to then cover down. He is not a box defender anymore. He does not have a gap. It puts your full defender or your conflict defender, which in this case would be our wheel linebacker right here, it puts him to the boundary and in less space. He can actually hip the defensive end and he can use... Uh, the the read of the defensive end. Uh, if it's zone away from him, he naturally fits on the outside. The defensive end now can close the B gap. The wheel basically doesn't have to move, and it helps with with the uh, if teams decide to flop their read, which we'll talk about later. 
Here's a three by one set. And again, running an over front allows your mic to hit the defensive end and cover down to the number three receiver. The safety, the Sam linebacker here is all the way covered down to number two. He is again going to match two. Uh, the mic always matches three. The thing about uh, staying even and going back to quarters principles is that you essentially have created uh, bracket coverage for everyone. The corners are essentially going to take man, uh, number one man. You've got the outside linebackers and the safeties over the most dangerous receivers, which are the slot receivers, and Mike always takes three. Here is an 11, and in case you get pro spread uh, teams that like to run RPOs, the best way to do this is to run cheat. Uh, the Sam here again is covered down. You've now cheated the mic and the wheel over to the two speed side and your down safety or your boundary safety has now basically become primary support. He is now in the C gap. How this plays out in, in sky coverage is that he's essentially a robber and he's robbing the curl. He's reading the end man line scrimmage. He's reading his gap. He's basically sitting right there in that curl to counteract uh, slants. He can now break on X hitches, and he is in the run game. You're basically giving them a run read, uh, that the C gap is open, and to attack that gap, and as the safety sees that ball handed off, he fills in the gap, and he's basically your plus one to that side. You always want to have a plus one in, a, in the passing and in the box. And, and by running running a, a quarter scheme, you essentially get that. You have a three over two right here. And you with this, you now have six blockers on seven. Uh, so you, you've now got your plus one in the box and you've got plus one to the field. This is where you see a lot of the arc option reads, the read zones and things like that, power reads, things like that out of a 20 personnel. Uh, running this, again, you get your cover down, which is to the field, to, to kind of counteract uh, the bubble and the switch screens to the field. And we will talk about how you can play with this backside second, the safety, and especially the backside safety and, and corner combo to counteract RPOs as we go further. But off of alignment, you have essentially eliminated all the passing RPOs. We want to eliminate the, the field screens first. That's the, that's the big hitter ones. That's the one that teams want to get their best athlete into space and create one-on-one -on -one matchups. Well, we've eliminated that essentially by covering down the SAM and the safety is now your plus one to those screens. So we have now got numbers here. We've got numbers in the box and we'll talk about how you can counter out the X hitch and the X slant, uh, to the single receiver side as we go along. Here's our film study. We're going to go through a couple plays with RPOs, talking about how you align to them, how the alignment is, and then how they essentially fit up to what we're seeing by the offense. Okay, this first, this first one right here is just your simple 2 by 2 zone read bubble. As you can see, we've got a cover down by the same linebacker. He's all the way out here. The mic is in the box. Our wheel is hipped, and he is folding into the open B gap. Now, the read side, we wanted the running back. In this game, we wanted the running back to, to carry the ball. So we are going to have our, our three techniques set to the running back side, which is basically what we get anyway. Uh, it's a field call that allows our Sam linebacker to cover down. Now, the quarterback, what I'm, what I'm guessing is this isn't a true RPO, and what I see at the high school level aren't really true RPOs. This quarterback is going to pass it. But just so you, you gain knowledge of what we're looking at here, you see the defensive end at the top hold. You see the quarterback pull it. He's going to throw it to the switch screen. Now the receiver drops it, but as you can see here, you have uh, basically a vice tackle situation. Corner gets cut, which we don't ever want that to happen. But now we have the Sam linebacker screening in on block to make this tackle. If he would have caught it, it would have been tackled right there. And you also have the safety in here. If you look over to the boundary side, if they were to have flopped the read and started to read the full linebacker, you would have seen the wheel work to the box, but he has enough space where he now can go out. And again, we have a vice tackle situation to the outside. So here, essentially, you have a two by two zone read bubble. Quarterback decides to throw it. The nice thing that I like too is you also have the mic as he sees ball thrown is, is coming here. So you have numbers into space and the Sam linebacker not having to worry about anything in the box or box read can actually sit out here and be in the face of the receiver which is essentially what you see right here. 
Okay, here's another two by two uh, right here. This is going to be a flop read, which we talked about. This is out of a three uh, three down front. Now, out of an Oki set, you're basically running an under front to this. Uh, so we have a, we essentially have an under front right here. They're reading our Jack backer right here. He's he's seeing him keep close right here. What we've done here, anytime that we get a stack set, we're gonna make sure that we're in a, in a cover two scheme, knowing that we're probably gonna get some sort of a switch. Plus, we can set the point right now on screens without having to pull our outside linebacker. If you see here too, anytime we get a stack set, I'm gonna apex the I'm gonna apex the outside linebacker again, setting the technique over to this side we now have the cover down over here even if we run a tight front the mic essentially is your edge setter on here and the Sam is always going to be allowed to cover down I can't stress that enough if you want to eliminate field screens you have to cover down your outside linebacker and this is what we get right here so we have cover two to both sides I call that cloud coverage so we have cloud coverage to both sides let's see how this plays out again the offense is smart this is a good team they run RPOs a lot we knew that this was going to happen our jack backer starts working back towards the line this is essentially the read and we're going to get the we're going to get the flop call on this so he fakes the he fakes to a little bit of a it looks like a quarterback power he sees the jack come down he throws the ball our corner who is now in cover two alignment sees the ball thrown let's watch this he sees the ball thrown and he's taken right now dip and rip and he makes a tackle now the nice thing about this the jack linebacker sees ball thrown look at the plus numbers we've got we've got one blocker who's in charge of three guys that's a win in my book anytime that we can get that that's a win in my book and this is a play behind the line of scrimmage this is a tackle for loss on the corner this can be repped every day in practice uh, the dip and rip, we work this a lot, especially if we know that we're going to get stack sets. We're going to work the dip and rip, and, and this kid does a great job. And again, Jack Linebacker, because he's basically an overhang, he sees it, runs out. We also have the safety there as well. So by alignment, we've actually dictated this. We've got a bluff call here on the Jack Linebacker, uh, forcing them to throw the ball as he scoots closer in. They know that we're three over two over here. They're not going to run this way anymore. So they're going to fake the quarterback. They're going to fake quarterback power trying to get our backers in, but it doesn't matter because our Jack Backer sees it. He looks to fold in, sees the ball thrown. Now he's straight line down. He's a, he's a right pull and go down the line. Corner ends up making a tackle. Okay, here we go. Three by one. What you see out of this quad set, again, this is a three down, uh, but I don't mind using three down when talking about four down because especially if they're running an Oki, you're essentially in an under front. We just have an overhang right here. We are in what's called special coverage. That's man on one. Most offenses don't throw to the number one receiver in, out of three by one, especially at the high school level. So we run a special coverage so that we can get that cover to look. We can get that quick screen read look from our Sam linebacker who's all the way covered down on outside alignment. I would like my Mike linebacker to plus it a little bit and be more outside of the box, maybe even stacking the five or hipping the five. They see that we don't have our mic, and this is the thing. We, the read is dictated on the mic. The mic is not outside the box. If he was outside the box, that's a fold. They're going to go ahead and run it. That's a light box. That's a that, that's basically a 4-1 a box. Because he's in the box, they're now going to throw the screen. You Understanding RPOs and what offenses are looking for is going to help you then uh, be able to attack them. In this, they're going to throw it because the mic is in the box. If he was out here and hipped, they may not throw the box. They may actually truly read him. If he folds in, they throw it and may take a longer read. Again, you want to force the quarterback to read post-snap. You want to force the quarterback to read while the play is going. High school quarterbacks especially, that that's, you're putting it all on them. If you're playing an elite high school quarterback that it reads really well, then you want to then force the read. Make him, make him see it early. Make him throw the ball pre-snap. If, you, if it's not an elite quarterback, it's just a, an average Joe out there, uh, then you want to force the offensive coordinator to, dis, to make the read for him because you or make the read during the snap. Always, always create hesitation. So here we have we have a bubble read. Quarterback sees the mic tucked in the box. He's going to throw it. Sam linebacker sets the point. 
cuts it back to the Mike linebacker. This is exactly what we want and why we're running this coverage right here. We knew we, that we were going to get bubbles by three. Excuse me. We knew we were going to get bubbles by three. Sam linebacker sees it. He sets the edge right here. Mike linebacker runs down the line, takes a great angle, and we now have a vice tackle situation. Safety is there. Gives time. The Sam linebacker causing the cutback right here, which is key and not dipping outside, uh, dipping inside, creates hesitation and cutback by the runner. So we have essentially forced this read. This team would also throw X hitches right here. Running this oaky front and having this overhang right here eliminates that pocket right here, that curl pocket, that slant pocket right there. And we have now squared up and we're driving on this. So they, they essentially went back to the other side ran a quad set and are, and are attacking us with the bubble. So let's run through this. Bubble thrown, Mike pulls down the line, makes a vice tackle. Again, we're talking about maybe a one-yard gain, if not a tackle for loss. Okay, here's your X stop. I, I wanted to make sure that we got a two a two back set look in this. Uh, again, this is a team that loves the RPO. They read the leverage. Uh, they knew that we would get uh, a jack attached in any 20 personnel, so this is essentially a, an under front uh, or an over front, if you want to count it, that we're setting to the H. Um, our Sam linebacker is covered down, so we have a three on two, so they're going to turn away from the bubble. Uh, so we've already, by pre-alignment, eliminated the bubble route. They're now going to read the leverage of the corner. They knew we would get an attached jack. But we also had a plan in place too. If we were starting to get hit by the uh, the X the X hitches, that we would then kind of loosen our jack up and, and kind of cut him to number one. You can either there are two things that you can do with this, uh, especially out of a three down. You can either press this right now and create kind of a cover two scheme or a two man scheme to the boundary. Uh, anytime you press the quarterback, they're going to go away from the X hitch. Uh, there, most teams don't want to throw the fade unless they've got an elite receiver down there. And to me personally, I want to force low percentage throws. Fade is completed maybe at most 20% of the time. So I'm going to go ahead and press. In this, we were in a three down. We knew we were going to get the cut by the jack. And so we were able to play off. And now we've got a robber, a robber safety. And we're basically playing uh, sky coverage over here as well. So let's run through this. So... They see off leverage. Now, this is a team that was a pre-snap read team. They they said if they were six yards or more off of the receiver, we were going to get a next hitch. So we knew this was coming. That's why we, we didn't attach the jack every single time against 20 personnel. But we had shown the tendency to attach the jack, and that's why they decided to attack us right here. Corner knows it, drives on it. Uh, it, it's a bad throw by the quarterback, but even if it was a good throw, corner would have been right there. Uh, this is what I call a, a, a slide technique by the corner. He's watching for three-step read right here. We also have the safety. Jack linebacker turns and runs. If he catches it, it's for a three-yard gain, four-yard gain. Now, some offenses would say, hey, that's just as good as a run. So my point to you is if you would like to eliminate this completely, Press this guy. Get rid of him or widen out the jack uh, and don't necessarily attach him as much as possible. I would like the jack to, as soon as he sees that it is a pass, as soon as he sees the quarterback pull it, to then look, get his eyes to the inside hip of the receiver and drive to the hip. If you notice here, he just kind of goes flat, especially when he knows, and goes up the field. That's not what we want. Uh, it should have been a left pull right here. He should have been at a 45-degree angle finding that hip. If he does that, he may even actually get a pick on this or – uh, clean the receiver up before the corner even gets there. So again, look at this. We've got three guys on one guy. That's what we want to. We want to eliminate open field tackles. We want to eliminate one-on-one. -on -one. We want vice tackles. We want gang tackles. That's what we want. And you can do this off of alignment. And if you set up your defense correctly, you will get these pluses in the secondary as well in the box. It is possible to have plus and pass and plus in the box by running a two high scheme and by running a quarter scheme. Here we have uh, an 11 personnel. I wanted to put this in here again. Now we've got 11 personnel. Uh, I would prefer that we're in a uh, under front set the five over to here, uh, but we're not. 
I think we got the uh, alignment wrong, but we do have a loose jack. We do have him. He is conflicted right here. We're going to get basically a read bubble. Now, our linebacker stays outside. He sits at home, and so the quarterback ends up handing it off. By playing cover two, we allow this man to stay at home and read. He can attack the line of scrimmage. We've got a backer who can rock back, especially on zone away. We've got plus numbers to the back, to the to the strength to the strong side. So if you look at it right here, we're actually okay. Our wheel linebacker belly keys off of his gap. Belly key to me is he gets a guy, he crosses his face, now he can go. So our, our three technique actually uh, eliminates the gap. He steps there. He sees that it's back out here. We get rocked back. Because we're in cover two, he's technically a hang linebacker. He can slow play it. He slow plays it. Quarterback doesn't want to throw the screen because he knows we're in cover two. We're going to get a plus on the screen, so he hands it off. But the great thing is we belly key, we get a vice tackle. Again, I'd like that outside linebacker to be more aggressive once the ball is handed off to the vice tackle. No need for him to go upfield, work to the near hip, and get a good vice tackle right here. And essentially we now have, uh, we have little to no gain. So by alignment, even in a three down, let's say we were in a four down. How would we do this? Well, I, I had previously shown you how to get a cheat alignment. He would have been able to apex. We would have had them cheated. And again, the same result probably would have happened. They would have given it. The end would have crashed. Backer would have rocked out. We probably would have had a vice tackle between these two as well. So all you're doing is basically shifting the line over. Now the safety has primary fit support to this side. Uh, we end up forcing the cutback just off of our alignment here basically being in an over front to the tight end with an extra overhang we get the cut back and we get the vice tackle but again we eliminated pre-snap rpo here and we eliminated the pre-snap rpo here with the press we're actually running for press because it is tight it is a tight end but by pressing the receiver especially the single receiver and playing the loose press technique here We've eliminated the, the X hitch or Z hitch and the Z slant or the X slant if it was a 20 personnel look. So let's go over some stop calls. These are some simple stop calls that you can use to defend the RPO schemes that you're seeing. Um, here, we're basically going to force the issue right now. We're going to force the quarterback to either pitch it right here um, or to uh, pull it and go. So this is a zone scheme. We're going to use full line movement. Uh, everybody's double gapping. Everybody's going on block back. So what you end up getting here is everybody's setting the wall here. The quarterback's getting an automatic run read. Again, obviously principles Sam has dived Mike has quarterback to pitch the safety now has pitched the quarterback we know the corner is going to basically be man on man and the safety is going to be man on man here he's going to creep down as he creeps closer he's just going to get maybe a, at a eight yards instead of ten and he is now running to the inside hip of the number two receiver if he steps down now this is great against this edge pressure is great against teams that you know are going to do the zone read bubble because you're forcing the throw you're forcing the one-on-one -on -one tackle and it allows the mic to start rocking the mic has no gap in the box now he's a free player he's now the quarterback player he's going to start working to the outside if the quarterback pulls it and runs i'm now going to get a vice tackle by the safety who's working to number two and back in and the mic who's working to the inside shoulder of the quarterback sam has to take dive he's flat and fast off the line taking the dive if the quarterback decides to throw the ball, the mic is already rocking back to the field. He's going to take the inside hip of, of the receiver running down the line, and, and the cover safety is going to work to the inside hip as well, trying to run him out of bounds. Look, every often, every defense runs a, an alley drill with a safety. This is nothing more than an alley drill. You're essentially blitzing the, the curl right here. Uh, and if you know you're going to get a bubble, this is a great way. This edge pressure, this edge blitz with full line movement allows the mic to work to the field, allows the safety to attack the bubble right now. And the corner essentially has number one man to man in case it is a screen and go or a bubble and go. The best thing about this, you get a cover down and you get a three on two in case they want to flop read it. If they know they're going to get here and they don't want to throw it there and he quickly throws it over here seeing that the edge blitz is coming and he throws it the other way thinking he's going to fold in, you've now got a three on two. So you've eliminated a pre-line movement, and you're blitzing smart, you're pressuring smart, Mike working to the field, safety working to the bubble. 
This is another one that you get out of a quads look. You get the zone read uh, with the st with the hitch route right here. What this does is this uh, drop. Um, I like to call it drop right here. He's dropping into the boundary. You get a simple line movement. Again, part of those principles that I talked about earlier. Simple interior line movements to change the B gap. Spread teams are looking for the B gap. Change it. And by changing it, you also change your cover downs. Uh, what if they see him spinning down? They want to try and run a slant underneath. He's but he's not blitzing. He's basically sitting and robbing the curl, waiting for that slant, waiting for the post, waiting for the hitch, and then he's going to break. But he is primary support in case we get we get a uh, you should get a hold call, and you should get him in here. The wheel's going to fit in the a gap. What this allows the mic to do is cover down to that number three receiver. So if you're getting killed by the hitch, and and maybe if you're running an over front, you put your mic in way too much conflict. He now has a gap, and he's got to cover the number three receiver that's not realistic and he's going to be late every time what this allows you to do is now cover down the mic he can now take the stop route you've got the safety over the top and you're basically working two on two the outside this is the route that they're trying to hit they want the mic to fold in you want to cause hesitation if if you use that line movement he's expecting him to fold he may throw it to that mic linebacker Especially if it's one of those called read teams that it's not a true RPO team and they're saying, hey, we're getting a fold mic. Just go ahead and throw it to the hitch. He may get a pick right there. Plus, they don't account for the down safety in the box. So if they hand it off, you now have a plus one in the box. You've got a one-on-one -on -one tackle in the box. Uh, so this is, this is another good one. Interior line movement and drop in the safety. Here is your arc read, and again, you've got to decide what you want to do. Here we want the quarterback to run the ball. What we got now is we're going to go with the simple line movement. Again, we've pressed the corner, eliminated the hitch route over here. We're going to run what I like to call a hard technique by the corner to the boundary, and that's an easy call. You're getting the wheel folding back into the A. You're getting the, the tackle for cutoff. The end now, with the tackle becoming the nose, has dive. You're giving a pull call. So even as he goes here, I've got Sam who's covered down. He's now the pitch the, the cover safety is now going to insert himself uh, and and he's going to read quarterback to pitch whereas my mic totally has quarterback so even as I get a puller they've created an extra gap with the H back anyway but guess what we've got plus one I've got my safety to the outside I've got my mic who's going to make it spill if the quarterback spills he's now attacking here and if the quarterback if it's one of those pop plays like if you've ever seen K-State I think uh, Oklahoma State does this a little bit where the quarterback pulls it runs towards the line and then throws it i know auburn does this as well uh you've now eliminated that with the cover down by the sam and now you have the pitch player the quarterback the pitch player in the safety and the mic you always want to have plus one in the run you always want to have plus one in the pass and we essentially have here if he throws it down and let's say the sam overworks it he's cutting back well he's cutting back to a cover safety and he's cutting back to a mic that's already rocking that way anyway uh so you you've essentially uh eliminated pre-snap the rpos you're forcing it to stay in the box um, remember, if you force it to stay in the box, you've eliminated the explosive pass. You've eliminated the one-on-one -on -one tackle to the, to the edge. You've eliminated your maybe your lesser athlete or a, a safety coming downhill to tackle a maybe their best athlete one-on-one -on -one to the field. So that's my clinic on uh, defending RPOs. If you have any questions or if you uh, have anything that you would like to add on to this or, or comment on this, please do uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter and DM me. Again, that's at the underscore coach underscore A. You can also email me at C-O-A-L-E-X-A-N 732 at gmail.com. Uh, please take a look at my website, matchquarters.com. There's a ton of resources there for you. Uh, again, feel free to come with questions, and, and thank you for uh, watching this clinic.